All right. Can you hear me, guys? All right. Before I uh, before I start, can I have a selfie with you all? Is it okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I'm Harshit. I work with PlanetScale, and uh, I've been maintainer of Vitis. And I've been with the project for almost uh, six years now. And uh, with me, I have Manan, who is also working with PlanetScale. He joined as an intern, and now he's also a maintainer of Vitis. He's been working for more than one year now. Um, and we are talking about scaling databases with Vitis today. So let's go over agenda. Uh, we'll be talking about what Vitis is, uh, where it got evolved and how it, how it looks like, what it's, it's trying to solve the purpose. And, uh, about, and then we'll go into the demo. Uh, we'll show you how you can actually import data from AWS RDS to Vitesse and how it seamlessly works with Rails uh, over Vitesse. And also, uh, based on the time, we'll also talk about some upcoming feature. So uh, Vitesse is basically um, a horizontal sharding solution on top of MySQL, uh, which, which basically means that uh, uh, if you uh, if you are running out of scale on MySQL, you can put Vitesse on top, and it will it will do seamless uh, sharding for you. Uh, I'll talk in more de details about it, uh, the, but that's what Vitesse is at a higher level. Uh, it's a eighth CNCF graduate project, uh, and it was started in uh, YouTube at 2010, and it was then donated to CNCF for maintenance. And it's an open source project. Uh, we have a highly um, distributed uh, community and a contributor across the world who is contributing to Vitesse as a project. Uh, these are some of the uh, client, uh, cusp, like uh, uh, companies which are actually having millions of QPS on in production on Vitesse. Uh, some of them is like uh, JD.com, uh, which has like uh, in 2019 they did 35 million QPS in a, on their singles day in. Uh, and now they have been doing much more on uh, Vitesse. Uh, there's Slack, who is running like 100% of their database on Vitesse. Uh, there's Square Cash App, a financial uh, cash app, which, also doing, which is also running their application on Vitesse. Uh, there's Planet Scale, who is basically offering uh, uh, Vitesse. Uh, they're offering powered by Vitesse, and they are running tens of thousands of uh, clusters by now. So what it solves, basically. So we talked about, right? It solves scalability issues on MySQL. And there can be three types of scalability in general. Like uh, you have, you're having a lot of QPS, and you're not able to serve from single MySQL. So you need to shard and you, so that your QPS are distributed. Similarly, for your data, you're running into terabytes or petabytes of data. And you cannot uh, basically uh, keep it in single MySQL instance. Then again, you have to do sharding so, so that you are able to scale. And also, your, and also connections. So you have a lot of applications who are trying to just connect to a single MySQL instance, and you're running out of connections. So uh, we, so we just basically do connection pooling for you so that you, you can scale. Let's go into some features. Uh, now, because I talked about sharding, which means you'll have a lot, a lot of MySQL instance running per shard, and you, it will be very difficult to manage. So it does uh, easy cluster management for you, which means if your primary goes down, it knows which replica to bring up as a primary, and it will fix all your application stuff, and you'll, you'll, just, keep start, you'll just keep serving your traffic. Um, if, yeah, and, and it, it also, like, uh, um, so in cluster management, it also comes like if you have, if, because you have done sharding, like, uh, you might have to also move tables across. It does know how to do it, and... Uh, and it can, you can move data tables from one database to another database. And uh, uh, like, uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you run out of like database on one shard, then it knows how to do resharding so that uh, you, you can, again, keep scaling your database. Uh, one of the other thing is like uh, you have migrations, uh, which means you, you are trying to create new table, add column, delete column, or things like that. And uh, Vitesse provides you online DDL operations. Uh, which, which means that uh, uh, you don't have to take any downtime or anything, and it will just do seamless uh, migrations for you. Another one is the backup recovery, which means uh, if you can tell where you have want to take backup for, and it will, uh, it will, it will take backup for you. 
And whenever you start a new replica, it knows where, which is the latest backup. It will pull it down, and uh, uh, it will, again, plug it back to the replic primary and fix the replication for you. And once it is caught up, it will, again, go into the serving state for you, and it, it, that will also just start uh, serving traffic for you. Yeah, another is uh, query consolidation, which means uh, if you are hitting same kind of query or same query, basically, like suppose uh, it just got uh, exploded with, uh, uh, it just went uh, global with same same kind of uh, information, which means you'll use every, your data will start receiving same kind of query uh, to your sh same shard. Then it does query consolidation for you, which means it's try to do hot row protection for you. And it will consolidate it, which means it will not send all the same kind of queries down. It will it will keep buffer it, and it will only send one query down, and same result will just keep back, send back to you. So it tries to protect your, your um, database to going down. Another is the, the human errors, where you just wrote some bad query, or you try to select all the data from all the shards, or you try to update all the rows and stuff, so it put those limitations uh, around it, so that uh, you, you, you won't run into getting your database down in those terms. And also, you can uh, do block listing. You can do you can give query patterns that that should not allow you, and it will handle it will ensure that those kind of query patterns does not go to your MySQL. So before I go into the architecture, I just there are just two words I want to just get into it. Uh, one is shard. I already talked about you. Uh, basically, a shard is nothing but having a primary and a lot of replicas running, and then you'll have multiple shards running. And the key, pa key space is just uh, synonym, syno synonym to like uh, your database, which means uh, uh, th a key space is basically containing of multiple shards. So uh, in our demo also, we'll be using key space terms. So basically, it's a collection of shards. Yeah, let's go into the architecture. Uh, if, you, if you see here, uh, we have something called uh, uh, shard one, shard two, shard three, two, shard n which belongs to one key space. Um, here we are running MySQL, and on top of it, we, have, we call it something called VT tablet, which is a sidecar, uh, which is sidecar, which is running along with your MySQL. What it does is basically, this is the one which uh, manages your MySQL, and also any query that will come will ultimately come to this, and then it will be sent down to MySQL. This is the one which also does the, does the connection pooling, uh, which, which means uh, no, all the connections will be handled by this uh, sidecar. Um, this exposes a gRPC uh, API to the outside world, and the outside world is basically nothing but VT gates. Uh, VT gates are the one which will be talking to the VT tablet using the gRPC, uh, and this is uh, this is the entry point for your applications. So what VT gate does is basically it will receive all the traffic to uh, to it, and it will basically VT gate will do the query parsing for you, and uh, then it will do the query planning, and then it will execute those plans. Um, and VTGate knows where your data resides, so it will, it will send your data to the right shard. It will do the right insert, selects, and everything. It also, it has an uh, 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 evaluation engine, which means uh, that uh, it, it knows that uh, how to evaluate a query, how to do aggregations and ordering and everything. So it has a, we have, it has whole new engine written on, on it so that you can do cross-shard queries. Um, and it, it's basically it's stateless, which means you can run n number of uh, VT gates based on how much QPS you have, uh, and uh, accordingly you can just scale. And on on top of it, you can put a load balancer, uh, basically so that you know how to make the discovery and how to connect to the the, the VT gate, which is the least, least used. And VT gate talks a MySQL protocol, which means uh, uh, that you don't have to change anything on your application. Uh, and it knows how to, basically you can just use this normal MySQL driver that is available for, for that language, and it will just continue to work as is. So you just have to change that instead of directly going to MySQL, you can just, you have to go through the VT gates. There's another component called VTCTLD, which is the admin part of uh, the Vitus cluster, which will, which, will ensure, which will help you to manage your Vitus cluster itself. And also we have something, uh, topo server, so you can plug in any topo server for storing Vitus metadata into it. That's all about uh, the architecture and the intro part of the Vitus. Uh, I'll have Manan hand over. He'll talk about the demo. Hello. Can you guys hear me? I think it's working fine, right? OK. I'm Manan. Hello, everyone. And I'm going to be taking you through the demo. 
The demo is really simple to follow, but it is extremely powerful in what it does. So we're going to start with the Rails app, which is connected to an RDS instance. And the entire point of the demo is to move from that RDS instance to Vitesse without having, without, uh, and moving all your data from RDS into Vitesse. So first, the step that we'll do is we'll first have a Vitesse cluster, which is called RDS on top of RDS itself, RDS MySQL, and Rails will be querying Vitesse RDS going through RDS. The data will be stored in RDS, but will be routed through Vitesse. So we'll be using the VTGate endpoint and a VT tablet on top of an RDS external data store. Once we have that running, we're actually going to copy all the data from that RDS key space into a Vitesse key space. So this Vitesse is the name of the key space that we're going to use for storing Vitesse locally. And that uh, we're going to copy all over the data that we have in RDS over to Vitesse. Once we're doing that, our traffic is still going to RDS. Once that's done, we're actually going to switch the traffic to go from the RDS key space to the Vitesse key space. At this point, RDS is still running. It has your data, but the data has also been copied over to Vitesse. After that, once everything is done, everything is working, we can remove the RDS instance. You can, you can uh, choose to destroy the data, keep the data, do whatever we want with it. But at that point, your Rails app is running entirely with Vitesse. So this is the workflow that we're going to follow for the uh, demo. Let's get started. All right. So over here, I have a RDS instance already running. It takes a little while to spin it up, so I already spun it up beforehand. And if you take a look at the databases that we have, we have one called Rails app. This is the one that we're going to use. Um, just before I continue, this font size is fine for everyone. People at the back, can you see that? All right, great. So if you use... There we go. So here I've already set up Rails as an app itself. So you see that there are two internal tables that Rails uses, the AR internal metadata and the schema migrations. Both of them are Rails internal tables and there's one extra table that we've created. It's called users. We're only using that table for the purpose of this demo. Essentially, we're going to insert data into that users table and we're going to record the latency as to how fast or how slow it was. So this is what we have at the RDS side. We have the Rails and we have already done the migration itself. I'm going to spawn the Rails server now. Okay. So we go over here. Let me restart this page. There we go. I already had inserted a few amount of data in the beginning, but now it's going to insert about four users every second, and it's going to keep track of the latency that it took to do those insertions, averaged over five seconds, and that's what we're plotting over here. We're also keeping track of the total error count that we see while we're doing those insertions. Right now we're starting with zero errors, but We'll see how, how, how we go. Okay. Over here, we're going to set up a watch on. There we go. So here we're just counting, like we're keeping a watch on the number of users that are there. It's essentially a very easy watch. We're just doing a select count start from users. And this is running against RDS. So you can see that the user count is increasing on RDS. We're running against that. Now, if you remember from our slide, the second thing that we want to do is spawn off a Vitesse server and have it in front of RDS. So I already have a Vitesse running as well. I'm running it in kind. So I'm not running it on, on, a, on Kubernetes. On, uh, I'm running it Kubernetes, but not on GCP or AWS. You can do that too. Vitesse operator works with all of those platforms. Right now, I'm running in kind locally, and um, I already have it set up. So I can really quickly go over and show you the configuration that I'm using. So if you look at the configuration over here, so we have key space configurations over here. We have one with test key space. Um, and we're not using it right now, but we eventually will, as I showed you in the slides. And this is completely with test owned. You'll also have a MySQL instance running inside. And over here, we have an RDS key space. And if you see, it's using an external data store. So it's not using MySQL directly, it's using an external data store. And here you're providing the parameters to how to connect to that external data store, which RDS user, RDS DB name, these are all environment variables that I've set it out in, in, in the startup script. So now that we have Vitesse running, our goal is to actually copy data. Uh, 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 we want to move the traffic from RDS, going directly to RDS, but through Vitesse. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go over into the database configuration. Database UDML. There, here, in, right now we're using those environment variables that are configured in Vitesse as well. RDS host, RDS DB name. So we can change these. Host is localhost because I'm running it locally. Database we're going to use is called RDS because that's the name of the key space. And like Harshit said, the key space is like an equivalent for database in Vitesse terminology. 
The user we're going to use is user. All of this is configurable in the in the uh, configuration of Vitess operator. Right now, we're not running with any password, so there's no protection on our on my cluster that I'm running locally. Plus, we don't do that in production. And the port that we have is 15306. So take a look at the error count and take a look at the latency right now. Right now, I haven't restarted the app. So for any database configuration changes, I need to restart the Rails server. There you go. So here, you see the error count increased to about nine. But remember, this error count is because I changed the Rails configuration. I had to take it down for a while and, and then spawn it off again during that time. And then the latency is going to drop. This is the VTGate page. This is like a Vitesse VTGate. Do you guys remember that? The proxy layer that's on top, which is connected, which the users connect to. And this is the plane for that, a UI, and it shows the QPS that's serving. So early on, it was no QPS because we weren't querying Vitesse directly at all. But now we're going through Vitesse even to RDS. So we have this graph that's coming up for QPS at VTGate. OK, so this is all working fine. We're now running, we are still going to RDS. So look at the latency. Latency has come down, it's stabilized to the point that it was before. It's spiked up for a bit, but it's back down to where it used to be. It's still going to RDS. So the data is still in RDS. If you go over to the watch on RDS, you see that the data is still being stored in RDS, but it's going through a test. The next thing that we're going to do is we want to move the database, uh, the, uh, the data from that RDS key space into a Vitesse key space, which we saw in the configuration is running all locally. To do that, we have a command called move tables. Now, I've already spawned this command off as well before I started the demo. Move tables command, it takes in two arguments. You can give the source key space, which for us is RDS, and you can give it the, uh, in, in, the in the parameter of this, you give it the uh, destination key space. For that is Rails, and Rails app is just the name for the workflow. You can, you can choose to provide anything there. This all parameter is saying what all tables I want to move. Since I'm moving all the data, I want to move all the tables, the internal, uh, internal Rails tables and also the users tables that you're using for the demo. So we have this point. We can now check out the progress that we've made on this. There we go. So the copy is complete, but we still have a, uh, we still have a vStream running. What that vStream is doing is because you're inserting data consistently, constantly into RDS, you want to keep, co keep copying it into Vitesse as well, right? Because you don't want to lose data when you cut over from RDS to Vitesse. So we keep a stream running, which is continuing, which is, you see that status site, status running, vStream, and it has a lag about a second, but it's keep on keeping on inserting the data that you, uh, you're, you're inserting into RDS, also into the Vitesse key space. At this point, we're ready to switch the traffic. We can switch the traffic from the, uh, the RDS key space to Vitesse key space. Take a look at the error count right now. So it's nine, and let's do a switch traffic. Okay, it's taking, okay, all right. So that one second time lag, that's, that's generally the amount of time it takes for it to catch up because it'll stop writes on the RDS and it'll, uh, it'll, it'll buffer those writes and it'll start doing them on the RDS key space. You look at the initial start state that we had, that we had not uh, switched the reads or the writes, both of them were going to the RDS key space. In the end, our current state is that all the reads and the writes have been switched. You can choose to do this in two parts, just switch the reads first and then switch the writes or just do the, uh, switch the writes first, in which case half the traffic would be going to the Vitesse key space Half the traffic will be going to the RDS key space. In this demo, I've done both together. So reads and writes are both switched. And we go over. You see that the latency has dropped. That latency drop is because I'm using Vitesse locally. So all the loopback interface calls that were going to RDS server spawned off in Paris are now just running locally. So this drop is coming because I'm running Vitesse locally. And you see the error count. We have a few errors that happened, but uh, I'll come to that point later. OK, so we've done the switch traffic. So at this point, we've copied over data, and we're using Vitesse, the key space. So once you're happy with everything, you've seen that everything is working, you can actually change your configuration of the app. If you look over here, you're still connected to the RDS key space. So how this works in Vitesse is that you can, I'll show you the routing rules. So Vitesse transparently also creates the routing rules for you. So that even though, when you do, when you do the switch traffic, even though a user is connected to the RDS key space, they're actually going to the Vitesse. So if you look, look over here, it says that any query that comes to the RDS users table should actually be served on the Vitesse users table because you've done the switch traffic. So essentially, your app does not need to change when you do the switch traffic. Once you've done with it and you're happy with everything, then you can change your app to actually start serving traffic from, uh, from, 
the, directly from the Vitesse key space. So there we go. All we need to do is change this to Vitesse. And like before, if we want this to take effect, we have to actually restart the app. At this point, we're querying directly to Vitesse. So we're at the last step of the demo. Did you have RDS running? Uh, you have Rails running, and it's querying directly to Vitesse. The RDS is not being used. And if you take a look at the watch over here, this watch is still getting data. The reason that it is, the, the reason we do this is until you actually complete the, uh, the entire move tables command, we insert the data back from Vitesse into RDS. So that if, if whatever something, something does not work out, your, some, queries, some queries are not working against Vitesse because it's a sharded database, we have MySQL compatibility, but there are some queries that won't work. If something like that, you hit roadblocks in that sense, then you can actually go back and you won't use any data. Once everything is done and you're happy with everything, then you can go ahead and complete the workflow. Now this takes in one more parameter. It says keep data. So I'm choosing to keep the data in the RDS server. If you don't, if you don't provide this parameter, it'll by default go ahead and delete all the data that you had in the source key space. And if I go ahead and look at RDS now, this count is now stagnated. Like it's not going to increase any further. It's a stabilized because we've completed the workflow. Everything is moved over to Vitesse. We no longer need to insert data back into RDS. And if you go and you look there, you still have insertions happening while this is going on. And that is it for the demo. So let's see, how much time do we have? Okay, we have enough time. We have about 10 minutes left. So we can talk about the upcoming features. So uh, actually, I created the slide, but I wasn't sure how much time I'd have. So I thought that I'll talk about them in as much time as is left. So we have enough time. So this first one is VTORC. This is Vitesse Orchestrator. It's a fork of Orchestrator that we have tailor-made for Vitesse. Essentially, this is the, uh, so Harsha talked about automatic fixes and things, right? Like if, uh, if you were running Vitess and Kubernetes, you could have a MySQL pod that got evicted. So it got restarted. If it restarts, then it's, it's replication or not set up correctly. Things like these. So right now, if, you, if, you, uh, so right now, if you're not using Vitess and if you're doing ma managing things yourself, someone has to go over there and fix those replications, right? And VTR is the automated component of Vitess, which will do this automatically. It will go over, it will check that there, there are automatic failure scenarios. It will check that you have a primary, you have a replica, the replica is not connected to that primary or that it's not sending some async acts, or it is set to read-only, so there are a bunch of failure scenarios. Whatever goes wrong, VTORC is the single, uh, single thing that can fix it. So we have, we have operations that you can run manually as well through the VTC TLD, but VTORC is the automated failure fixing thing that Vitesse offers. So if you have VTORC running, anything that fails, VTORC can go and fix it. It can do emergency repair and shards, it can do anything. Like if the primary, if the primary fails, we can even switch traffic to a, 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 a read-only and a, a replica server and, and guarantee that there won't be any um, data losses. So we'll find the one which is the most advanced. And if you're using semi-sync, the one which is the most advanced, there will be at least one server which has all the act transactions, right? So we'll promote that. And that is how we guarantee that you won't lose any data even if your primary fails. And these things happen in production, right? I was scared a little about the demo as well. Oof. I had, the, I had the internet running on my local phone, but you never know, right? So the next thing that we have here is VT Admin. And that is a new and improved UI. So right now I can show you the VT CTL UI that we have. Okay, let's go. This is VT Gate, so 15,000 should be really CTLD. Right, so this is the UI that you have. This is the VTC TLD UI. It shows the shards, it shows the, uh, the number of shards that you have in each key space. Right now we're running them in uncharted, so we only have one shard, but you can shard them out as your data grows into multiple shards. And if you go over in here, you get the serving shards and the list of tablets that we're running. So currently we're running in one, one primary, one replica mode. This is the old, old UI, so it does the work, but I can't actually show you VT admin right now. I don't have it running locally, but if you go over to the Vitesse docs and you spawn it off yourself, you'll see that it's a much better UI. You can look at how queries are run against Vitesse. You can look at the, uh, look and look, look at the instructions that Vitesse will run to actually execute the query. It's good for debugging. You can do all the operations there as well. So you don't need to actually go to the, uh, to the CLI and run uh, start replication or something like that. 
you can actually do it through the VT admin as well. So VT admin is going general availability in the next release of a test, and VT org is going general availability in the release after that. So these are the two great amazing features that are coming up in Vitess. Yeah, just to add to that, um, Vitess, VT org is already used in production, uh, but the company does not want to be named, so, but they are already using in production. But we call it experimental because we want to make sure that we are ready, like as a Vitess community is ready to uh, take on VT org, but it's there. People are already using it. And 14 release is uh, going to happen next month, and it's going to be very stable anyways there. Okay, so these are the resources. I have the link to the demo. You guys can go along that, that uh, link and you can follow along. It has all the instructions how you need to do. There's only one prerequisite, which is you need to have RDS running. Uh, these are the docs, the code link for Vitesse website and, and the Twitter handle. We're open for questions now. Thank you. Okay, this is working. So the VT tablet uh, component, is that basically your uh, consensus state machine? Or? Could you repeat the, the question? I didn't get so, it. So uh, on top of MySQL, you mentioned you have this VT tablet component. Right? Yes. Can you talk a bit more about that and what that is? Is that just a consensus? So VT tablet statement? is like a sidecar instance. So basically, if you want to send a query like VT org, it needs to some, some way to like start replication of MySQL. Instead of querying directly to MySQL, we prefer to have a sidecar instance VT tablet, which supports gRPC protocol and a few other things that you can use. So VT org will query VT tablet, and, it'll, and the VT tablet is the instance that will run it on MySQL. Same goes for other components. So it's like for communication purposes, for other things, for like uh, getting like the health, health stream as to uh, VT tablet will also sell, uh, send health streams to VT gate. It's like for the registry purposes, for all of those things, we have a VT tablet sidecar. It's not the one that does the, uh, the durability things. That actually happens through the VTCTLE. And the durability also happens directly into MySQL. So you have a primary instance. And you set it up with how many number of semi-sync acts you require for it to make progress. And that is, the number of, that, that is how you use the durability. And Vitesse will guarantee that when you do the failovers, it will respect the durability policy that you set. All right? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. All right. Could you pass the mic there? I have two questions about backups, and okay. the, first of one, uh, the first of them is where does VTS store the actual backups? What oh, providers? Yeah, does it so actually Vitesse has uh, some, it's a community, basically it's supported by a community, right? So few of the backups that it already supports is like uh, Ceph storage, S3, and, and you can do contributions on more on those and file systems and stuff. So, and you have to just give in, in the VT tablet that we showed the sidecar. That will take those inputs uh, that where you want to store the backup. And it will, it will use that information to do the backup. And when you start a new uh, replica, it will know like how to get from the latest backup and then hook it to the primary and start the replication. OK, so thank you. And the second question is, does it support point-in-time recovery? Does it? Uh, does it support point-in-time recovery? That, like, does it do? Binary log backups? Right. No. Um, point in time recovery? Uh, yes. You want to take? Okay. We, we have a maintainer. Uh, actually, so, uh, she's Deepthi uh, Deepthi, our, Deepthi and she is a team, uh, team lead on uh, Vitesse. Yeah. Uh, Vitesse does support point in time recovery. We don't have our own bin log server, but we integrate with Ripple, Ripple, which is a bin log server. We do plan to provide a bin log server with Vitesse so that we don't have an external dependency. Anyone else? Uh, does VTS uh, support uh, uh, MariaDB? It used to support, but then the MariaDB fork actually changed in, com in incompatible ways that we have to drop after 10.14, I think. 10.4. 10.4. Oh, yeah. OK. Uh, no plans at all, for sure, for supporting Postgre, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. Uh, well, one more question. Uh, what about support for hybrid or multi-cloud uh, deployments? So, sorry, can you say that again? Support for multi-cloud or hybrid cloud uh, deployments. 
Um, I sorry. Yes, hybrid. Oh, uh, Vitess operator is there. It, you can run it with uh, any cloud provider. Uh, it, it, it operator just works in, yeah, in multi-cloud, yeah. So to add to what Harshit said, the Vitess operator for Kubernetes works on any cloud provider's Kubernetes, but you will have to do the multi-cloud networking yourself. That part is not part of the operator that we currently have. Yeah. But if you like to do contributions, yes, we would love to have it. Okay, so I guess, okay, oh, there's one more here. Um, so when, when you did the demo, it looks like you're effectively traffic splitting between RDS and the Vitesse key space, right? Right. No, but we didn't, uh, we didn't right. split what, what? the traffic. It was earlier going entirely to RDS and at point point we switched over and it was going entirely to Vitesse. You can, however, split the traffic, but only between reads and writes. So you can, uh, you can just switch the reads over to Vitesse first, keep the writes going to RDS because your vStream is still running. The, all the rights that go to RDS will eventually also show up in Vitesse, so you're safe there, but you can, uh, you can do it in two steps. Okay. Yeah, right it will run only at one place. But I, we don't allow doing things like 20% uh, going to RDS so, and 80% going to Vitesse. Things like that are not permitted. You can do in one step for reads, one step for writes, or both together, which I did in the demo. When, when we said it is going through Vitesse, doesn't mean that we are storing it in Vitesse. It was going through Vitesse means the, the VT gate level that I showed. Through yes. VT gate, it is still going to RDS. For, or VT tablet and then we're going to RDS, yeah. So, so yeah. Curious if you also support the other way around. We do, we do. Like um, uh, VTS to RDS. You do, you can, you can switch the traffic back if you need. So the question is whether we support a migration from VTS to RDS? You, I think it. you can do it because our move tables are written in such a way that uh, it doesn't matter. You just have to d yeah. define that key space. And if you have defined the key space, you can do move table to that key space, and that key space can be RDS. Like, like how we did. It, it, I think yeah. in the demo, uh, you were writing to one, and you said you can read from Vitesse. Yes. But when you move over, this one stopped updating. When we do the switch write, yeah, yes. No, no, no. Uh, no, like no after switch write, also it was still going back. But when we did say complete, now we have done the complete migration, then only it stopped. So there, uh, we could have done the demo in a way where you switch the read and writes from Vitesse. But RDS is kept up today. It was there. It is there. It was happening. No, no. Till, yeah, till you didn't let, do let the complete. Know. Yeah. So first you have everything in RDS. You have a Vitesse on top of RDS. Then you copied everything to the Vitesse key space. At that point, RDS is still running. Our data is going to RDS. You do the switch traffic. We have a reverse replication stream running, which means that any data that's going to Vitesse is also being copied over to RDS. Until you do like complete, everything is fine and you're done with it. We, we won't stop uh, sending data to RDS too. Yeah. Okay. So the way uh, the, we had to show the demo, we had to show all the steps at once. But in real life, what people will do is that they will wait for a few days before they do the complete and stop the reverse replication. And there's a question there. Yeah. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, during the demo, you mentioned the errors and that you explained them later. Could you tell us? Uh, the errors? Yeah, yeah the errors came. Errors. Yes. So, so what uh, happened there? Thanks. The, the errors, right? The errors you were shown, when the errors will come. So uh, basically, we, the errors were coming because you have to stop the rail server. But when you do, you will do rolling updates of your rail server when you're picking up the new configuration. So those errors can be provided. And sometimes you'll see a few errors that we saw in the demo when we start buffering. So a couple of errors will start the buffering at VT gate level, and then it'll start buffering all those requests and you won't see errors further. So, so in the beginning, the errors that we saw, for example, that I had to take down the rail server and bring it back up again, which we saw like 10, 15 some errors. That was because I only had one rail server running in the demo, but if you have multiple rail server, you can just take one down, change its configuration, bring it back up while others are serving traffic, in which case you won't see those, those, uh, those, those errors. Yeah, we have a buffering basically mechanism yes, in VTGate. VTGate. Yeah. Any, any planned operation through Vitesse, whether it's a reshard, it's a, it's a repair and, or a move tables, we buffer traffic at VTGate. But you need to configure the buffer pool and how many queries you want to buffer at a time because you could have like out of memory issues if, if you buffer too much, right? So at that point, we start, uh, uh, we, we stop buffering uh, the amount of the queries that are old and we start throwing errors for those. Hi, how much latency is added through the VT gate? You have an extra, 
how much latency is added. Extra uh, latency through VTK? Yes. It's usually uh, one to two milliseconds, that's what we claim. One to two milliseconds extra. But, but you should think it's uh, distributed, so it is going through one server, and then if you have a good network, then it's fine. If you have a bad yeah, network, Yeah, the network latency is there. Network can also. Hi. Hello. When do you plan to support the uh, select star query on the sharded key spaces? We do. We do. We do. We support uh, all, all, sh all sharded queries. Like, uh, we have a good set of support for the sharded queries, and you should just try it out and see if your, it works for so your for application. Queries, it, mostly most, it should. Yeah. Most of the queries should work in the sharded level as well. So example, if you have data that is stored in two different shards and you're trying to join, that also is, works. That also yeah. works. We have an evaluation engine at the VTGate level that will do those things for you. Yeah. But there are things that still won't work. For example, uh, window, window functions. Because yeah. in an uncharted mode, we can rely on MySQL to do that all for you. Like we can just pin the query down to MySQL, but for window transaction functions, other things like uh, sharded mode, the support is not there. But uh, evaluation engine is the primitive that you need to add support to. So uh, if, if there's something that is not supported, we welcome yeah. contributions for that. Yeah. If you open an issue and you really want some queries not working, we'll just, we just make it work for you. So if you yeah. tried this before, uh, say, January of 2021, and you found that certain things didn't work, we've actually implemented a new query planner called Gen 4, which is opt-in right now which supports a lot more of the select star type of queries with sharded mode. Yeah. So select star definitely should work. Yeah. Even if you add new columns. If left joins, right joins, everything. It just yeah. works for sharded queries. So we do group bias aggregations, everything on VTGate level as well. It's for more advanced, recently added 8.0 functions and stuff that right now we don't have support for. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, a lot of sharded query support has been added over the past year. So you should try out a newer release if you've run into errors in the past. I have a few questions. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. One is, um, in terms of sharding strategy, is there like a fixed set that you support or it's up to us to choose? Yes. To you. So we have some um, set that you can choose from. Otherwise, you can write your own sharding strategy and there's an interface which is a plugin basically. If you implement that plugin, it yeah. will use your sharding strategy. And I saw like the number of uh, where you keep your replicas and all that is independently configurable. Yes. Right? Yes. So one of, uh, in the multi-tenant situation, you might want to have certain like, you know, your Europe customers data in right. Europe and America customers right. data in Right. America and so we, on. We, we support uh, region-based sharding, and uh, we, we call that multi-column index, and you can say this column is for region sharding, and this is where you want to do local within region. I see, but it's still considered one instance of it as? Yes. Nice. You, you can still, if you want, you can make it multi-instance, but yeah. we still consider one if, if you want to do yeah. that. It's highly configurable. It's up to you how you would want to run it. Yeah. The last question probably it's a little bit more open-ended is how do you compare with like Cockroach and Yugabyte and like yeah they're all your competitors here right yes like, they are yeah. how would you like this, how do you differentiate so uh, Vitus is completely open source uh, in the first place and uh, Vitus has been around a lot longer and it's built on uh, 25 years of work done on MySQL so. At the query execution layer, it's very efficient. And uh, the sharding strategy for Vitus is very flexible. It's not uh, hard-coded. So these are some of the things that we feel are very good about Vitus. It, and it has been heavily tested, basically. It's, it was built in 2010 and was heavily used at YouTube at that point. So it's heavily tested. I'm not sure about the other part. So. Yeah, that's the other part. If you, yes, they, they bet on different things. Yes. Yeah. My sequel, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so that's yes. the best part. We don't have to build everything in VTK level. We can rely on the MySQL to do a lot of heavy lifting for us. If we 
So we push a lot of things down for MySQL to do it. So if you do count star, right? I'll just give you one example if you're still here. So if you do count star on some table, right? We don't do, we don't select all the rows to VT gate. What we do is we push down that query down to the MySQL level to do the counting for us and we just do the summing at the VT gate level. So our engine is built in such a way that try to push maximum to MySQL because it knows how to do things. It's already been doing for so long. So why not? And then. Ah, okay. So, uh, for analytics, Vitus is probably not yeah. the best fit. Mm -hmm. For transactional yeah. workloads is where you should use Vitus. Yeah. So, even within transaction workloads, We have not found, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously there might be people who tried Vitus and did not go into production with it, but the number of uh, users we already have, the workloads are very diverse. So, there is Slack, which is uh, chat, uh, you had YouTube, then Square, which is a financial app. Uh, there are e commerce websites who are using it. Using gaming Vitus. companies are using it. Yeah. So, uh, food company, uh, any, any, I think I, it's almost in now in every uh, department. Yeah. Any sector. Yeah. I think uh, JD.com really proved the scalability of Vitus even beyond YouTube because uh, they've been running it and when they do the single stay in China, the amount of traffic they get on their website is beyond anything we see in other parts of the world. I think we're uh, out of time, so we are available to talk at the Vitesse booth as well over here. So uh, please feed. Thank me. you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.